Deputy Minister of um, Correctional Services, Inkosi Patigile Olomisa. Ah, Dilizi Ndaba. Ah, Dilizi Ndaba. It was on Natal MEC for Education, Omis Mbalente, Fraser, Sir Jabula Gakulu Panao, Goba Isfunda, Sabas on Natal, Wizzy Zofundo, Siaba Segala Gakulu, Amabanda, La Pagat, Emma Jayam Gagit. So Sir Jabula Gakulu to Natan and Kanji, who speak up or some law, who can't just take you in your own house. Se jabula kapul na wapu tu kono zosege na folum seven zesuenza numkando se chegwin we kubera us 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 segele kapul we ndene zinige zesuenza na so se jabula kapul na nini kono la uche president of the house of traditional and coalition leaders inko ususifiso shinga se abonga kapul kuti na we. Communities. Was on the regional commissioner, Babu Naila, Lieutenant General Babu Kwanaz, and as good in the blue, only like Pegam Mubale, never would you forget the study. But they say about Babu Kwanaz, the one who am one of the poison, the regional commissioner, Obabu Tobakal. Over we have one bank, over commissioner, the match is long, and all the regional commissioners. I can see from um, Free State and the Northern Cape, um, Smudl, uh, Tate, Tokolo from uh, MLA, and uh, Temashiri, Mabungtetwa uh, in the Eastern Cape. Abanya Mabona, but suspect some they could be here. CDC, Mamulepe, who's also the program director. Bishop Dube Pindabe, engineer, Esham Teto, Laiwas Umatal, Abanya Bakuma, engineer, Esham Teto, in the province of Wazum Natal, and other officials from the Department of Education, and other stakeholders that I might not have seen. Gani bingele la nonge, and we are grateful to ni nati la ni zoba misana nati to celebrate the life of the matriculants who are inmates who have chosen a life to turn their lives around. Gibingele la nani nonge, inmates from across the country, the matriculants, and all the officials of the Department of Correctional Services who are here, and the gentlemen, ladies and men from the media houses in our country. Firstly, I want to join Mbabunya Osa to extend my condolences to the families affected by floods, Eteguini, Nebozo Natal Yonke, and in particular in the Osa Selady Smith, which have been hardly hit by these natural disasters. This is a sign that all of us here, we need to prepare for the future and the reality of climate change, which is becoming a reality in each and every day. I stand here before you excited and proud of the continued work of transferring skills to inmates through education by the Department of Correctional Services. The Department of Correctional Services implements a series of educational and vocational programs which are designed to empower inmates to transform their lives and enable them not to return to their previous lives of crime. Our work is geared towards ensuring that inmates, once released or placed on parole, use their acquired skills to obtain employment 
empower their communities and contribute positively to society. In a nutshell, once we release you from here, in the facilities, you become the ambassador of correctional services. Your behavior outside is a mirror and reflects on us. So, Nani Yoma, Abangan Benumaba Pumala, and Bachel, Uman Pumala, you must behave wherever you are going because you are representing all of us. Ogupumawe is also dependent. Good that behavior, Abangan Ben, who, when they get released, some of them, they commit heinous crimes. Although the percentage is small, but because of the crimes that they sometimes commit, the volume is too high. So now the normal feeling out of the park, we are harm. Please go behave there wherever you go. We don't want to see you again back inside here. As we gather in this fashion to announce the 2023 inmates metric results, we want to emphasize once more that our work is about correcting the offending character of inmates and contribute to the safer communities in South Africa. We have heard from ex-offender on how correctional service programs reformed him. And this is but one of the many examples of the stories of corrections in South Africa, which we are proud of. So the offender who was here narrating his story, there are many such good behaviors across the country. But as you know, good behavior does not attract a national media. But if he had committed a crime, it would have been a headline. But because it's a good story, he has reformed himself, he is behaving, and there are many of such good stories. So we also want to see such good stories from yourself, the metric class of 2023. Our metric results continue to be impressive and are in line with the legacy we want to leave in the Department of Correctional Services, which must reflect significant reduction of recidivism or repeat offending. We know that some of our parolees, through committing heinous crimes, render the progress we've made on the fight against reoffending to be lost in the blink of an eye. However, we want to reassure South Africans that 99% of our parolees adhere to their strict parole conditions and are indeed law-abiding citizens who appreciate the second chance that is afforded to them by society. Our metric results demonstrate the commitment of our educators whose tremendous efforts we duly recognize, for without them, we will not be basking in the glory of these good results we are announcing today. What is also notably pressing about our results is the fact that our learners also do well in subjects required to support our developmental goals as a country, maths and science. The high percentage pass trend in correctional services must be sustained and there must be, never be room for complacency. A South Africa needs skilled people and metric is an important base for the skilled generations which we seek to construct. To our learners, despite the tough conditions as a result of incarceration, their determination is unmatched, commitment and hard work have paid off. You have done us, your families and the entire country very proud. Congratulations. We congratulate you for raising high the flag of correctional services, a welcome development. When we reduce you, go out there and be good ambassadors of correctional services. Behave yourself and do not engage in activities which will bring you into conflict with the law again. This second chance, you must take it and run with it in a positive way. The awards and certificates you will receive must reconstruct your lives and be a reminder that the goals you have set yourselves are within reach. Those of you who will be registering for higher education, work hard in your studies so that you are not only complete your degrees in record time, but also attain distinctions and you are able to go and work in any place of your desire. We also encourage you not only to go to universities, but already in the correctional services, we have laid a foundation for you to do vocational training, like plumbing, welding, 
and other vocational um, qualifications. This economy will not only be built through university degrees. The technical skills that you acquire in the vocational training colleges, the economy needs them. In our country, some of the skills that we need, we can no longer find from our young South Africans because all of you, you want to wear suits, you want to be lawyers and, and, um, and doctors. As a result, we no longer have bricklayers, plumbers, electricians, basic things that the economy needs and households needs, and there is job for it. Whether you are employed or not employed, you can still do it. And you can still make money and drive the X3 that uh, uh, the offender was here for. <laughs> I also want to tell the country, as I do from time to time every year when we announce the results, that we do not pay for the tuition fees of inmates at institutions of higher learning. Rather, their families and bazaars carry the cost. As they see us now announcing the results, I know propaganda is going to run around that the Department of Correctional Services is going to pay for your tuition fees. You are having it nice and large in the correctional facilities. We don't pay for the, for the, for the, for the post-metric qualification of inmates. It's at the expense of their parents, relatives, or all bazaars. New life opportunities within reach for our class of 2023. All that is needed from you is to focus and refrain from engaging in notorious activities of other inmates, such as smuggling of contrabands, ill-discipline associated with being an inmate. As usual, some within society express the incorrect and greatly exaggerated narrative that our operational centers reflect hotels and holiday centers. I want to state that it's necessary that we must incarcerate you in human conditions so that rehabilitation can be possible. If we do not have programs of rehabilitation and unleash you into society, we'll be unleashing you with no skill, with no ability to reintegrate, to make a positive living in society. It is therefore important that we, we unleash you back into society with a particular skill that you can either participate in the economy or in the social life of society in a positive way, not the one of crime. The Department of Correctional Services is also implementing a self-sufficiency strategic framework, a tool that transfers skills to inmates where they produce their own food, renovate public infrastructure such as schools, clinics and orphanage centers. We have worked together with the Department of Education in the county to paint and renovate schools to ensure that learners attend classes in conducive environments. We equally have built houses for the victims of crime who were living in dilapidated structures, and our inmates have restored the dignity of our people. Inmates have also established sustainable vegetable gardens in communities and schools to fight against hunger, poverty, through self-sufficiency and strategic framework. We are doing this to be able to repay to the victims of crime and also to repay society for your offending behavior. There is also a victim support bill by the Department of Social Development that is in Parliament which will enable us to expand the programs that we must respond to, in particular to the victims of crime. Because as you are standing here, some of you have committed crimes that have left families destitute with no support structure or breadwinners have been taken out of society. We have a responsibility as correctional services and social development and the entire criminal justice cluster and the South African government to find programs that must empower the victims of crime. We are also at a stage in the Department of Justice of reviewing the Criminal Procedure Act to be more victim-centric because the Criminal Procedure Act of 1977 was drafted with no sympathetic eye on the victim. 
Today, some of our communities boast of plumbers, bricklayers, hairstylists, beautification specialists, bakers, and farmers, to mention but a few, as a result of skills that were transferred to inmates during their term of incarceration. We have equally offered employers resourceful, gainful, and, ad and adaptable employees who are contributing towards the growth of various companies across the country. All that we are appealing for, it is for employers not to overlook our skilled parolees, but rather give them an equal opportunity and pay them fairly for their labor. Because there is conspiracy by the private sector in South Africa that inmates or those that are ex-offenders, there is a law that they cannot be employed. I can tell you there is no such a law in this country. Inmates can be employed, they can do a job anywhere. The only exception is when you have been entered into the National Register for Sex Offenders, where inmates who have committed such offense, they cannot be employed to work in that particular environment. But in a nutshell, there is no there is no obscurity for inmates to be employed or ex-offenders. Because if you deny them opportunities of being employed, uh, reintegrate your society, there is no anywhere else they must go. So it's important that we rehabilitate them, we reintegrate them in society where they've got skills that is required and you need them in the private sector. They must be given the opportunities so that they can complete the rehabilitation program and not go back to their life of crime. Because it has now been proven to them that crime does not pay. Program director, as I have already indicated, our metric pass rate continues to be impressive and yearly soars above the national average. The investment we put in our education system year in and year out pays off with good returns. For the first time in the history of correctional services, we registered a female school in the 2023 academic year with the Department of Basic Education for the National Senior Certificate. <laughs> the school is at the Johannesburg Management Area and it achieved a pass rate of 62.5%. of the passes receiving a bachelor pass. Wow. We are hoping to expand these schools uh, across the country so that the female inmates, they can also participate and learn and also matriculate. But the please, oh mama, you should not be ashamed that we don't have a lot of schools across the country because our data shows that we have a lot We have metrics. In the majority, we have So our sisters, they do have metrics. And most of the crimes that our sisters have committed is economic crimes. About who also kill people and co commit violent crime. So this is a life that we need to change, rehabilitate, and make South Africa see everyone differently. And it does mean that as a, as a country, MNC, we do need to have a specific focus on the boy child. And I'm happy that the president has taken that initiative I believe in future we will see a difference, particularly at the level of crime prevention. Our pass rate in the Department of Correctional Services for full-time learners is an impressive 93.2%. A total of 137 out of 147 full-time candidates passed there are 2023 National Senior Certificate exams. We also have part-time registered learners in DCS. When looking at their performance combined with the full-time learners, 4% rate 
where 157 learners out of 187 passed. <laughs> Furthermore, 100 of these learners achieved the bachelor passes, for the one percent, for the one achieved diploma passes, and 16 achieved higher education certificate. We convey our special congratulations to this category of part-time learners because these are people above 35 years who are still dedicated to find some form of certification. We also want to convey a message to all the inmates across the county to also use this opportunity to come into the education space and receive some form of matriculation. We know that the majority of you prefer to do the other field work because you get some stipend there. But this is an investment for the future. We also obtained 129 distinctions. With 39 in life orientation, 26 in Isizu home language. distinction. <laughs> 13 in business studies, 10 in geography, and 4 in mathematics literacy to mention but a few. Nine schools obtained a hundred percent pass rate, and they are who said to be in youth in case of in the Eastern Cape. Two top, two top kids all in the Northwest. Sikrebe Moloaz in KZN. Grand Flame Youth Center in the Western Cape. Kalaga Busha in KZN. in Limbobo. Fabian Sport Youth Center in Kautin. Ebu Seli in KZN. We are going to give a good in the Dominator. That's why we brought the awards here. <laughs> it looks like KZN will host everything this year. The best learner in the Department of Correctional Services for the 2023 National Senior Certificate Examination is Ben Matthews Christopher, who obtained an average of 86.14% with six distinctions in English first additional language, mathematics literacy 86%, life orientation, business studies, geography, and tourism. He's from the Brain Flame Correctional Facility in the Western Cape. Yeah. We want to take this opportunity and profoundly appreciate efforts and interventions from the Department of Basic Education in all provinces. Siawahakulu MEC. We will not have achieved all this without the support of the Department of Basic Education countrywide. In all provinces, the support we are receiving is tremendous. But Duba Bungele has already stated the support that the Department of, of uh, Provincial Education here in Brazil Natal, under the, the leadership of MEC Fraser, has been providing to the learners here. And we are very grateful for the province of Guazul Natal for this support. And MEC, you can see, all the regions of KZN have passed with flying colors. They are dominating the national space. <laughs> we equally extend our appreciation to all stakeholders who are too many to mention for their valuable contributions without which our efforts of rehabilitating inmates and providing them with skills will not have been realized. As I conclude, 
I want to reiterate that we remain resolute in making education compulsory for all our young offenders. As full Utuman Kumala and Yoku Kumpagat, Babanya Benabafundi, you don't do any vocational training, you are not doing anything. So Utuma Kumala, you are going to be a liability again in the community. So because of that, we are going to make education compulsory. Whether you do Madrid, whether you do, whether you do some plumbing or boiler making or something, Nami Jemanje, when they bring me a file to sign for life as parolis, the first thing I check before I check to whether you are now legible, I check who is younger than 20 years in the party jail of Pumana. If Bangla 25 now for a pump, if Bangla 25 now for a pump, I check and tell you that I'm going to plan B, I'm going to well deal, I'm going to agriculture, I'm going to do it. I don't approve. I take it back because it's the moon to see me, sir. Who are we in the party? Because the show you are going to be a liability. If family are going to get to the weather, no make sense, I was the book for the room is the toilet to my people blocking it. So, what is your use? So, I take it back, I'm very clear. This one must go back, they must get something. And when they bring it back, they say no, the psychologist says no, it's rehabilitated and all that is fine. Which you yeah, can see, you might be fine, that is what he has told the psychologist. But where is the key? Yeah. What will be his contribution in society? So the woman Kumala, I was going to know the Kumunga Tamba. And this one from the Salam Kevin. So we want to change with money the power and for the salary we give him for the salary we save it. We will need to change that perception and change that culture. So that's why we have been very clear to the national commissioner. We've given him a clear directive that everyone must do something, even if it's just to be a plumber or a boilermaker, or bricklayer, something. At least that will be of use to the community. We want you to live here with something in that regard. And this is in line with the Nelson Mandela rules, which stipulates the following. And I quote and I close with this one. Imprisonment should not be limited to the deprivation of liberty, but that it will be a time for the re-education of inmates. I thank you.